restricting ourselves to quantum mechanics and, and not yet going into quantum field theory, though I know that that is part of quantum mechanics, just what basically is the wave function? Good. I, that might as well start there, I think. Um, that's chapter one of the book, The Wave Function. And I think that it's a profound, profound change in how we think about the world that happened starting in the in the year 1900, but, you know, the revolution was completed in the 1920s. And the simplest way to skip over all the missteps along the way is to say, when we had classical mechanics pre-1900, if you were Isaac Newton, you would say, if I have a collection of particles, for example, I can talk about the state of those particles, the physical state, and that physical state is defined as the information that I need to know what the particles are going to do in the future and to know what they did do in the past, right? I need the positions of those particles, and I need the velocities or equivalently the momenta of those particles. And then the laws of physics, if I know what kinds of particles I'm talking about, so I know their electrical charges and masses and things like that, the laws of physics tell me how they develop over time. And quantum mechanics comes along and says it's radically different than that. Like this, It's amazing how different quantum mechanics really is. And this is part of the reason why even physicists have trouble facing up to what quantum mechanics says. It says, for one thing, if I just have one particle, I don't have a position and a momentum for that particle. I have this thing called the wave function. And the wave function can be expressed in different ways, but it's easiest to think of it as literally a function of position. So everywhere the particle might have possibly been, there is a value for the wave function. In a, a typical situation where like the particle we're talking about is an electron in a hydrogen atom, and you have a picture in your mind of the uh, orbital of the electron in the hydrogen atom, that orbital sort of stretches out to infinity in principle. It fades away, but very, very, uh, very quickly, actually, but never quite gets to zero. And that represents the wave function. That is a picture of the wave function of the electron. And I forget if I said two things, but there's really three amazing things going on here. Uh, so the ontology is completely changed. Number one, you went from a particle with position and velocity to a, a cloud, right? A wave, a function of space, the wave function. Number two, you can never see the wave function. <laughs> We're going to get to that. We talk about measurements. But when you look at it, you don't see it. And that's why it's legit to worry about whether the wave function is real. Why are you demanding reality to something that I can never even see? That seems a little bit fishy. But then third... When you have two particles, you do not have two wave functions. If you did have two wave functions, that would be saying I have uh, the Greek letter psi is the, is the variable usually used for these kinds of things. So psi of x would be the wave function of a single particle. If you thought that when you had two particles, you had two wave functions, you might imagine having psi 1 of x, which is the wave function for particle 1, and psi 2 of x, which is the wave function for particle 2. But... Quantum mechanics says, no, that is not what you have. You have one wave function as a function of two variables, the two possible places I could observe, particle one and particle two. So instead of psi of x for one particle, for two particles I have psi of x1 comma x2. So it's not even a wave. It's not even a field in the usual sense, like the electromagnetic field or the gravitational field. These are fields. They have values at every location in space. The wave function does not have location values at every locations in space. It has values at every possible set of observational outcomes. If I were to look for the two particles, then I would be able to see the probability that they're here and there in different places. That's what the wave function tells me. So it's just, it's a very abstract, very completely different thing. And that's why physicists are still struggling to come to terms with it. You have said uh, about 20 things that I could ask questions about, but I will start with one thing that you said a few minutes ago, I mean, even before this response, you questioned whether we should think of the wave function as representing reality. And I think there's a deeper question here. I mean, one, what it means to represent reality or versus the wave function, I mean, being reality. And you also said that you can never see the wave function. So one, a function, at least mathematically construed, is just a set. It's typically thought of as a set. But then on the other hand, 
I had another another guest on the show, um, Carl Wyman here at Stanford, who was the first person to isolate a Bose-Einstein condensate. And he said that the way that he described it is when you have this Bose-Einstein condensate, you are looking at a wave function. That is how he describes it. So the question I have, I guess, is whether the wave function is meant to be something that represents reality or is it something that is real itself that you can observe? I'll be honest. I don't think this is a very sensible question to ask. I know why people are tempted to ask it. Is the wave function real or does it represent reality? I don't know what the difference is between those two things. Like it's a, it's a function. What, what does it mean to be real? You know, like it's, it's the mathematical way we describe reality by which what we mean is if you set up reality in a certain way and you let reality go, then you make a prediction for what you're going to observe. I can construct that prediction by setting up a certain mathematical fact, the value of the wave function at different points in space. I can evolve it using a certain equation and then I can do a certain procedure to it to make a, a prediction. But reality is reality. Reality is not some mathematical thing we invented. Reality is sui generis. It's, it's uniquely reality. The scientific question is how do we model reality? How do we describe it? What is the language that we use to talk about it and make predictions? And to me, the wave function is part of that. As far as seeing the wave function, we can't do it. I think that Carl Wyman was just exaggerating a little bit for poetic purposes there. Of course, this is a problem due to the fact that physicists don't, don't agree on what wave functions are or how they uh, should be talked about in a very real way. Um, in anyone's version of quantum mechanics, when you have a physical setup described by a wave function and you're going to make an observation... In the general case, sometimes you get lucky, but in the general case, the possible measurement outcomes do not include, here's what the wave function is. They include certain aspects of the wave function, and they might include different aspects that assign different probabilities to them. That's the, the fact of measurement in quantum mechanics, is that measurement changes the quantum wave function. That's not true in classical mechanics. You might think, well, in classical mechanics, if I want to take a picture of a planet. I need to observe the photons coming off of it. And so some momentum is leaving the planet. But come on, you can make that exchange of momentum as tiny as you want. You can observe things in classical mechanics as close as you want to not disturbing them at all. Whereas in quantum mechanics, no matter how hard you try, certain kinds of measurements are always going to disturb the system by a lot. That is one of the things that makes quantum mechanics fundamentally different. One other thing you said that I, I just wanted to clarify is you said that you don't have two wave functions with two particles. You still only have one function, one wave function. And what I wanted to clarify is whether this is the standard reading that there is only one wave function i know that that's the that's maintained by those who adhere to the many worlds theory but do the other interpretations of quantum mechanics also have only one wave function any version of quantum mechanics that is realist about wave functions says there is only one wave function. There's one physical thing, the wave function of the system under consideration, and ultimately the wave function of the universe. Um, there are approaches to quantum mechanics that are not realistic about the wave functions that are, I shouldn't say realistic, I should say non-realist, anti-realist. So there you can treat the wave function as a tool that individual agents use to make predictions. And one person might have different information about a system than another, and therefore they might assign a different wave function to the system than the other. Um, so it's, but it's not that each individual subset of the universe has its own wave function. It's that each agent has the different wave function they assign to the whole universe all at once. <laughs>